Bare necessities, simple bare necessities, simple bare necessities of life, right? <laughs> I know I can't sing. Forgive me. I'll edit that out of this video. No one will ever see that where I did that. <laughs> I don't know why it amuses people. He says he's going to edit it, but he never did. I don't know if he forgot. Maybe he's getting senile. Not that old, for God's sakes, you know? Senile. How old people think I am? It's not the years, though. It's the mileage. That's the problem. <laughs> it was like, oh. People tell me they're like 60 years old and they look like they're about 35. It's like, you can't be 65. Like, yeah, I am. It's like, wow. And you must have lived life in a, a hot tub surrounded by angels or something. <laughs> how, could you be, how could you look that good at the age of 65? <clears throat> I'd be like uh, Cindy Crawford, or uh, there's a couple people that look like that. The older they get, the younger they look. I'm going to definitely edit that out of this video. I actually find it a challenge, and it's actually a good thing to uh, simplify things that are really, really, really abstruse. One thing that English suffers big time from is the fact that English ain't, I said ain't, yeah, <laughs> it's not an, it's ain't a metaphysical language. Mm. It, it just ain't, and ain't is not a word, I know that, okay? Um, we have this idea that brain, of course, you know what the brain is, that squishy lump, you know, between your ears. We really forget about that one. That one, of course, is accurate, but we confuse mind and consciousness. We also confuse the word soul, but that's a matter for another discussion, because there is a soul used in the, con uh, in the English sense. It's only used in Old English. Maybe some parts of the world still use it that way. Where soul is a reference to the empirical person, such as in like Shakespearean English, like, nary a soul was seen walking the streets. Or, uh, was a horrible day when the ship went down and it hit the iceberg. Nary a soul survived. And this, of course, is a reference to the physical, psychophysical persona non grata, yeah? This thing, the meat, the, this, this walking animated meat suit. So th this is really bad in English because when you say soul, a lot of people might have grown up reading Shakespeare or they, they still have that ingrained in their genetic memory via English or other languages have the same issue, but English is pretty bad at it. It's like, what do you mean soul? You know, there's, there's no such thing as a soul. That, that thing dies. There's this. It's like, no, we're talking about the big S or the big self. Every form of metaphysics refers, by the way, to two selves. Even the Bible talks about, uh, I think it was Mark, Book 6. I forget the citation on that. My, my Bible citations are not so good. My Pali citations are really, really good. All forms. Plato, Pythagoras, Advaita Vedanta, Principle Upanishads, the Vedas, original so-called Buddhism. And, of course, Buddhism was actually... Technically called Brahmayana or Path to the Absolute, according to Samuel K of 5.4, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about consubstantiality. People don't make a distinction between mind and consciousness. Yeah. Ancient languages are really succinct in making a distinction. Some better than others. The ancient Pali word for consciousness is Vinyana. Vinyana is prefixual VI, means opposite to, inverse from, Jnana. Enosis. In other words, it's a reference to the consubstantial self, yeah. the consubstantial citta or nous. Nous to be Greek, citta is to be speeded to sanctum in English, meaning the transcendent. By the way, the only noun in uh, all of the Nikayas, original pre-sectarian Buddhism, and I'm not really here to talk about Buddhism, that is liberated from the psychophysical is the citta. Suvimuta chattasa nabhanam. Nirvana is the thoroughly liberated suvimuta citta or nus or spiritus saying suvimuta chattasa nabhanam. Bhava nirodha nabhanam. Anyway, um, like yoga citta vritti nirodha. The, the, the end goal of yoga is the subjugation of citta perturbations that are uh, noetic or spiritus sanctum perturbations. This is a transcendent principle. That would actually be the light. So let's just make things simple. Because there's an old saying, and it's highly accurate, that if you can't explain it to a barmaid, 
then you don't really understand it. If you can't explain it simply so that a child could understand it, you don't understand it. You have to understand the principle of consubstantiality. In other words, it has a beginning in time. And anything that has a beginning in time has an end in time. And this, kiddies, is the reason why the number four, yeah, in uh, many Asian languages means death. Why does four mean death? Because every ancient culture said four is the number for time. And anything that is subject to time or has a beginning in time has an end in time. And if it has a beginning in time, then it must have an end in time. And that's the reason why the word four means death. Because if you're subject to time or you had a start in time, then, you know, the end for you or it, etc., is death. Consubstantiality. What doesn't have a beginning in time? That would be the pre-empirical spiritus sanctum or nous, and this of course is nothing other than an inflation of the transcendent self. And by the way, there are countless poly passages. If you want references, I'll give you references out the wazoo. I've written many countless articles about this fact. So what about consubstantiality? There is between mind and consciousness. Mind <clears throat> in the case of meaning mentation, thinking, cogitation, burning the wood, between your ears, literally so. You know, how is that distinguished from consciousness? People don't make that distinction. Mama Kavinyana, by the way, is a passage that is constantly found in the ancient uh, Nikayas. It means uh, mentation and consciousness. You know, they're both are like, uh, you know, conjoined twins. Wherever there's the one, there is the other. And those are both consubstantial to the psychophysical being. In other words, they had a beginning in time. What's a really, really, really simple analogy? And by the way, this is also, too, the reason why there'll never be world peace, because everybody has their own vinyana. People's like, well, if there's ultimately only one, you know, then how is it that everybody has their own consciousness? Have you ever taken a soap bubble bath, which I haven't done in like 20 years, and seen the same light overhead reflected a million times in a million little soap bubbles? Each is individuated. Each little soap bubble, some are larger, some are smaller. Some have a different color cast to them due to the chemicals that's in the bubble. Same thing with consciousness, manaka vinyana, mentation and consciousness. Now, this, of course, is the flashlight, which would be synonymous, of course, to the citta, or nus, or spiritus sanctum, or synonymously, of course, the soul, which is pre-empirical. It does not have a beginning in time, therefore it does not have an end in time. Remember, suvimuta chattasa nabhanam, the thoroughly liberated citta, which is liberated, by the way, in doctrine, not my spew, not my opinion, this liberator from the psychophysical, and of course this is exactly what Pythagoras and Plato and Iamblichus, on and on and on, all said, including Plotinus, yeah? This is not temporal. It doesn't have a beginning in time, it doesn't have an end in time. However, it suffers from primordial agnosis, i.e. the extrinsic attribute of the absolute. This, of course, would be synonymous with the chitta. Let's turn the light down just a little bit here. Synonymous with the chitta, or the nusa, the spiritus sanctum. Over here we have, of course, the gross body of matter, whatever we want to look at here, gross body. Yeah, my body's a little gross, right? <laughs> it's a metaphysical saying, like the gross body, meaning gross of uh, psychophysical elements, you know, flesh, bone, so on and so forth. That's what is meant by the gross body. Not meaning mind in specific, which of course it is. And what therefore then would be the consubstantial consciousness? Because there's no mention in any form of metaphysics of the purification of consciousness. Nowhere. It's the same thing that there's no mention of the end of physical suffering. And that kind of shocks people. I had a few emails about that because I made a video about that last week. I said, listen, you can look all day in any translation. There's nowhere, anywhere, period. Not the Nikayas, not Advaita Vedanta, not the principal Upanishads, not Plotinus. An end of physical suffering. Nobody teaches that. No wise person, anyway, who ever lived. Nothing that was actually ever true, wisely said, of the great, great masters. It's never said. There's no end to physical suffering. There's no purification of the psychophysical. The psychophysical consciousness, of course, has a beginning in time. The psychophysical consciousness, i.e. manoka vinyana, which is Pali, which means mind and mentation. Wherever there's mind, there's mentation. And we have this, you know, just in English, we don't have this distinction between mind and consciousness. There's nowhere you can look in any dictionary in English, you know, they'll make little minor nuances that People don't have that in English. And there are many other languages that suffer from this too. Uh, not that I know Spanish, but I think it suffers from this also. 
uh, a distinction between mind and consciousness. It sees both one and the same thing, but they're not. Empirical consciousness, mentation, not talking about mind and mentation, but mentation, which is thought, burning the wood between your ears, thinking about something. Yeah, this, of course, would be the chitta or the nusa, the spiritual sanctum, before empirical manifestation, the consubstantiality, because the consubstantiality, I like the little, little radio uh, analogy here, and the radio analogy is the most perfect analogy. I came up with it. You're welcome. Most perfect analogy so far as explaining metaphysics simply. This would be, of course, the new sort of spiritus sanctum, and this, of course, would be purple, I think that purple, right? Purple vinyana, or purple consciousness, yes? Now, this purple light that you see is the consubstantiality of two or more things. In this case, this purple would have to be superimposed in the case of a meat suit, a body, right? It goes no further than the meat suit. This purple light, which is part of the meat suit, goes no further than the meat suit. It is consubstantial. In other words, with the breakup of the body, this is cast aside. There's no purification therein. Just as there's no purification ever mentioned in any form of genuine metaphysics of the end of suffering, there is no mention of purification of empirical consciousness. This is the empirical consciousness which has a beginning in time and therefore necessitatively, logically, has an end in time. There is never any mention of purification I'm going to purify my consciousness. Well, that's completely impossible. You could calm it down some, but there's no premise of immortality, amata. By the way, the only noun in doctrine, in reference to the Nikaeus, which obtains amata, which is immortality, is the chitta or nus. This is the chitta. And of course, this is composed of batteries and so on and so forth. So this is composed of many things. So don't take the analogy too far. We're just actually talking about the white light, which is antecedent to prior to the psychophysical. Yeah. This is somebody else's vinyana. They might be a happy person. Theirs is not as uh, you know, clouded as the purple one. So this would be orange vinyana. Maybe this is Sue's vinyana consciousness. Yeah, this is uh, Sue, Sue Girl's uh, consciousness, empirical consciousness. This is uh, John Boy's purple consciousness. And then, of course, we could superimpose these two as one thing, one type of thing. This is uh, Jim Bob's consciousness. I don't know what purple, kind of makes an orange color. You take purple, well, this is orange already. We have a different consciousness here. There's no purification of any of this. It's completely impossible. It is not a refuge. Yeah, saranam in the Pali. It is not the premise of immortality. It's not the basis for this bambu, freedom from bondage. It is not a premise for transcendence or of liberation. You know, how can this be, how can the psychophysical be liberated? That which is poo by definition is always poo, yeah? You know, petrified poo, my buddy actually collects petrified poo or cuprolites, <laughs> dinosaur poo, he collects it. Some of them are really beautiful because they're agatized and some of them are even opalized. And so some of the dino poo actually has opals running through it. He collects, you know, poo is poo is poo, right? The point being. The consubstantiality of something has a beginning in time, and therefore within it, of it, and about it, purity is completely impossible. Consubstantiality, in other words, this purple light that you see here, yeah, requires the consubstantial conjoining through harmony of two or more things. In this case, this filter and this light. Let's not talk about the batteries and the casings and everything that makes up this light, just the light itself. This is purple vinyana. This is orange-colored vinyana. Yeah. There's no purity therein. So, In English, we lack this. We lack complete distinction between mentation, mind, and consciousness. They're all pretty much lumped together as one thing. The radio analogy. Most people never think about radios, obviously. So, <clears throat> But they think the broadcast is the signal. Frequency mode. The pressure was 30.42 inches and falling. Once again... At Lexington, it was that broadcast that comes out of this speaker, yeah, that is vinyana, just like the purple and the orange vinyana. It goes no further than this radio. Well, that broadcast I heard out of the speaker is the signal. A broadcast at 162.400 megahertz, no weather radio. No, it's not. The signal is not the broadcast. A broadcast is the interpolation of two things. Listen closely. 
Think about this, because by watching this video, you can understand a mountain of books on metaphysics. People read them all and still not get it and have a sharp mind. I read them all. I'm really smart, but I still don't get it. That broadcast is the interpolation of the conjunction of two things. The signal, which is everywhere and nowhere. Yeah, there's no, there's no signal in the radio. The radio tunes a signal, right? We, if you have a half a brain, you know this, right? That broadcast is the interpolation with the processors and the resistors and the analog to digital converters, blah, 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 blah. All the crud that's inside this radio. That's what that broadcast is. That broadcast that comes out of this speaker. The broadcast that comes out of this speaker is that frequency's vignana. Yeah, that would be 162.400 megahertz, for example, is is that frequency's uh, vignana, purple vignana. Another frequency might be the orange vignana. Yeah, I dial in another frequency, blue vignana. But the broadcast is not the signal. Broadcast is the harmony of two things. This ability, this radio's ability with its antenna to tune that signal, interpret it with the analog digital converters, resistors, blah, 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 blah. And the radio and the battery that powers it back here. And here's taking it a little further before ending this video. What happens when you smash the radio? People have, because I keep getting this question all the time. People ask metaphysical questions and live stream. What happens when we die? That's like, and the correct answer is another question. What on earth makes you think you are that which dies? Because you are not. Well, they, well, this die, well, I smashed the radio, it's dead. Well, you're right, it's gone for it. But I mean, what about the signal? There's no fire in this TV, this uh, iMac here. There's no signal in this radio. Smash the radio, the signal is still everywhere and nowhere, right? Where is it? Yeah. That's what they used to do back in early days of religion and metaphysics. Where is, where is God? Well, yeah. Like some mute, some mute guru that's been meditating underneath a tree for 50 years. Like, where is it? Where's guy? Like, eh, eh. like, that guy's crazy. Let's get out of here. Well, the mute guy, <laughs> the mute guy was right. It'd be like someone asking, you know, I smashed the radio. Where's the signal? Eh, eh, eh. Like, that guy's crazy. Like, no, he's he's dead on accurate. It's eh. well, <laughs> it's everywhere, nowhere. <laughs> That signal, of course, is synonymous with the chitta, yeah? The pre-empirical, which is not manifest. The only reason it's able to be manifest is because it's tuned, because that's all the body is. The body is working in harmony. It's still able to work, and therefore it tunes a signal, because that's all the body. What happens when we die? What makes you think you are that which dies? And this is the correct, appropriate understanding and distinction between mind, mentation, i.e. thought, mentation, thinking, burning the fire between your ears, and consciousness. And this is the correct understanding of the principle of consubstantiality. It has a beginning in time and has an end in time. Yeah? This purple light is made up of two or more things. Let's just think of it simply. You know, the, the white light and the purple filter. Yeah? Without the white light, yeah. It's just both of these things need to work in conjunction for this purple light to manifest. It has a beginning in time. It is not a source of refuge. It cannot be liberated. It's not a source of immortality. It's impossible. This is understanding metaphysics in simple, such that even a child could grasp it. I said nothing too complex in this video that even a child couldn't grasp it. Or a barmaid. Not that I have anything against barmaids. I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know in the description below. A lot of people never see the description. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. I read every comment. Always do. Lux veritas and have a lovely week. And this is Saturday, weekend. Here we go. Goodbye.